Math 31, welcome back. Let's take a look at example two. We're going to factor 6x cubed minus 37x squared plus 32x plus 15 into linear factors if five is a zero of the function. Now I wanna just take note that I'm giving you a starting point here. All right, so starting point given. And I mentioned that because after we move beyond this problem, I could just ask you to factor this function and not tell you to start with x equaling five. And we're gonna pick up a different theorem that'll help us get our starting point. Ooh, ooh, that's my pencil. All right, if five is a zero, I, I know a couple of things. If five is a zero from that factor theorem on the other page, you know f of five is equal to zero. And you also know that x plus five is a factor. Oops, excuse me, x minus five. All right, but I'm missing two other factors. And I say two other factors because this is a cubic polynomial. So I probably have two other linear factors um, hanging out that I gotta, I gotta find. So if I want to find my zeros and I want to break this polynomial down into its linear factors, synthetic division is a great tool to help you. All right, so we've talked about how synthetic division can give you function values, it can talk about factors, but there's even more to it. So let's unpack that. If I was gonna use synthetic division, I would put the five in here, and I take a look at my powers on x, they're descending and I'm not skipping over anything, so I don't need any placeholders. Now, if five is a zero, this better turn out to be zero. If it's not, I made a typo or, or, or the problem was written incorrectly. So let's see, the six comes down, five times six is 30, negative 37 plus 30 is negative seven, five times negative seven is negative 35, 32 minus 35 is negative three, five times negative three is 15, and these do subtract out to zero. So that's looking good. All right, so let's talk about how your synthetic division results can help you factor your polynomial. All right, so we talked about if five is a zero, you know that x minus five is a factor. That's from the factor theorem on the previous page. All right, now synthetic division gives you the remaining factor. And you're going to use those numbers, those coefficients to help you. If I took out a linear term, all right, if I took out a linear term from six x cubed, that means my lead, co my lead power now is x squared. You're always gonna go down by one power. So I'm gonna start with six x squared, and then I'm gonna just use these as coefficients in descending order. So this will be minus seven x minus three. So it can help you not only tell you x minus five is a factor, but it tells you the remaining factor. Now at this point you have a quadratic, and we've talked multiple times on how to handle a quadratic. You could factor the quadratic, you could complete the square, or you could use the quadratic formula. Now the directions on here said break it into linear factors, so let's try to factor this. So we've got x minus five. All right, and I'm gonna roll with guess and check here just to see what we have. Um, so six x squared, let's see, I could either have uh, like a three x and a two x here. I could go x and six x, something like that. I'll, I'll go with three x and two x. And I kind of penciled those in, so let me make them a little bit more solid. I know I still have a pencil, but I, I, put, I pushed on it pretty lightly. All right, now on the upside, there's only two things that multiply to three, and that's three and one. So let me just put the three here, and I am gonna lightly pencil that in, and the one here. Let's see what we get. Um, outer would be three x, inner would be six x. There is no way for me to get six x and three x to be negative seven x, so this isn't it. Let me erase that and I'm gonna switch the order. All right, so let's put one here and three here. So what do we have? Two X and nine X. All right, I can get that to be negative seven X. I'll put the negative here and the positive here. And let's just say, for example, this, this, this mat, or yeah, this breakdown didn't work, like the one and three here didn't work, then I would change this to six X and X and try the three and one again. All right, but I found it so great. All right. 
So with that, I know f of x is equal to x minus 5 times 3x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. So if I wanted to talk about the zeros, right, or the x-intercepts, I could see I had an x-intercept at 5, 0. If I solved this one, it would be negative 1 third, 0, and this one would be positive 3 halves, 0. All right, and that would be from using the zero product property and sending each of these factors to zero. All right, so we ran through all of this. Now again, I can always check this on my calculator and I would really recommend getting into that habit. Let me clear this out. Let me go to my y equals. Ooh, we had some stats in there. Let me clear that all out. Turn my plot off. I could type in 6x cubed minus 37x squared plus 32x plus 15. Let me hit zoom six, and I should be able to see a bunch of zeros, and they're gonna be pretty close to each other. Yeah, and you can see it. Here's one that does look like it's at about negative one third. I could see that being 1.5. That looks like it's in between one and two. And then if I count one, two, three, four, five, that looks pretty good. So my graph, even though I can't see the max and min there, it's looking like the x-intercepts are correct. And you could check it. Right, if I plug in five, I do get zero back out. If I plug in three halves, I do get zero back out. And then if I plug in finally negative one third, I do get zero back out. So I, I did find my, my other zeros. It didn't ask me to do that. I wanna be clear, this part was not asked of you. It was this, right? We were asked to factor into linear, uh, factor this polynomial into linear factors, and we did. Okay, with all that, Again, remember, I gave you a starting point. So I want to introduce something called the rational zero theorem that will create starting points for you. It'll create a list of possible zeros, and then it's guess and check until we find the one that unlocks the, the polynomial. All right, so with that, we're going to pick up the rational zero theorem in example three. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.